Uh, good um, morning, afternoon, afternoon. We're gonna say afternoon. It's Victoria, and then Luke is the one, my human tripod today. Hola. And uh, we're going to teach you how to train your dog. And we're gonna do it virtually because, yay, everyone's on lockdown. And if you can't come to me, I'm coming to you straight to your Facebook feed. I uh, know this is Django. So Django's one of my personal dogs. Uh, he is a year old, um, Belgian Malinois. Now his clicker is trained with dynamite, but some dogs aren't. And you know, the best way to get started and the funnest way to train your dog is with the clicker. Now I am not gonna tell you that the clicker will solve everything because it won't at all, but it's a super awesome place to get started and it's fun for you and your dog, okay? So what I have, this is <laughs> part of his food for the day. Now, this is Purina Pro Plan Focus, so there's some glucosamine in with this, which is one of the reasons why we feed this, and uh, because I have a Golden and a Doberman as well. Amber Hadlock says, hey there, Victoria. Hi, Amber. With a blue heart. Blue heart to you, too. Uh, but you can see they're bigger pieces. So it was so funny, because as Bart says, we know we don't want to use mouse food. If you use, like, the little tiny pellets, it's going to take your dog forever to eat them. With the bigger pieces... It's not going to take as long, which is always good. And ideally, what you want, how you use your clicker, how you charge your clicker, and this might take you a few weeks, and that's okay. It might take a few weeks to get it charged. What I want is, first, your aquarium. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. First, your aquarium. What is your aquarium? Your aquarium is the area that you work your dog. So I can have Django on a leash here so he doesn't go out and explore our five-plus acres, right? And that might work out really well, especially as I'm starting to train. I could do something like this and hold on to the leash. I could hold on to the, the handle. I could put it around me. I could step on it. I could loop it underneath the chair. You've got a lot of options, but if your dog's too distracted, make sure that your dog's on a leash. Make sure you're in a less distracting environment. Now we're outside here because, you know, yay, good old Florida. And it's 87 degrees. And what you do to charge your clicker. Oh, uh, Sam Goodwin says, how did you get your Mal to be so calm? Mine is six months and absolutely nuts. And Amber Hadlock says, how many feet is your leash, by the way? So this is a, a leash. Um, we actually do custom leashes. If you're interested, this is a bio thing. I believe this is um, eight feet. Uh, and then it wraps around. I wanted, I like leashes because I'm pretty tall. I'm over six foot tall. I like hands-free leashes for the service dogs and they have to be able to down comfortably while I am standing up for my hands-free leashes to work. Um, so if you're interested in hands-free leashes, um, message me because I do have a link for an Etsy shop um, and they support Hope Service Dogs. So it is uh, Alpha Apparel maybe, Alpha Canine, something like that. Um, it's Erebos' owner. Um, how did I get him to be calm? is first ivan picked them for me uh, second we reward calm so anything you you want to reward you're going to see more of and a lot of times people expect malin was to be crazy they expect you to be crazy and then they're not surprised when they are well i'm going to tell you yes they can be calm and they should have an off switch so he can be crazy at times but he also is like this at times too so how do you charge your clicker? First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pair the clicker with his food. Now, notice, like I said, we are using his food. Blake Forkner says, handsome Django, Avalon is doing well with her retrieval now. Oh, that's so awesome. So Blake was at our service dog school last month. She is the cutest little German Shepherd and she, she's such a little petite, like a little pocket rocket. Um, we saw one that really reminded us of, of uh, Avalon last week, another dog, but it was a mouth. This still reminded us of Avalon. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, and then I'm going to give him part of his existential food. I'm not going to use treats. I do use treats. I'll use treats when they first come in, and I will use treats with puppies, especially large breed puppies, because I want my puppy to grow as big as possible. So I thought he was about 80 pounds. He's not. He's only around 75 pounds, but hopefully we can get him up there to 80. So I'm just going to click. You can do a single click, or you can do a double click. Actually, a single click is a double click, if you think about it. Um, so you can click, and then you're just going to follow it up with food. 
So we started this with Ginger. Well, we didn't start this with Ginger. I was working this with Ginger last night while she was running free in the yard. She'd come to me, I'd click and I'd just drop food at my side here, okay? So we're gonna see how Django responds whenever he hears that clicker. That's what I expect. And then he comes to me, so the click ends and releases him from that behavior, whatever behavior he was doing. And in the beginning, your dog's not gonna be that fast with it, and that's okay. What you're gonna do instead is you're just gonna click, maybe you'll do this for a week. It's dinner time, you get his food ready, you come over, you click, and you put the food bowl down. Right, that's gonna get that clicker's gonna really mean something if the click always announces food. So how do I get him calm? Down is good, right? Amber Havlock says, how old for using treats? I have a large breed pup too. I will use treats from them from the very beginning and then until they're done growing. It's not gonna be that he's only eating treats, but you know, it's mentally and physically tiring for some of them to work. So maybe he'll eat work for his breakfast, maybe lunch will have some treats mixed in. You know, as my dog wants to work and is willing to work, you know, treats are fun to use. And you know, the nice thing, especially when I'm working a dog out in public, is treats leave behind that ick on your hand sometimes, but treats don't. Food does, treats doesn't. So it's that sprayed on vitamin mineral crap. That's what it is, but I, I don't like it. So I'm always doing this and wiping off my hands whenever I'm using food and I don't want that when I'm out in public. So I use treats out in public most of the time. Amber Adlock says that makes sense. So if I want him to even capturing behavior, we're gonna jump around a little. If you haven't noticed, I kind of jump around a little anyway. If I want him to put his head down, I could even wait him out until he puts his head down, which is an even more relaxed thing to do, which as a Malinois service dog handler, I want that. Now, when you put something out into the universe, sometimes it happens. And you know what? It, it, it was so weird. A couple weeks ago, I was doing a session with those owners and we were showing how to do nails because a lot of owners are very cautious and hesitant to do their own dog's nails. So as we were doing them, I was saying about getting the quick. I said, no, you're gonna get the quick sometimes and that's okay, and you know, because I put it out to the universe, I got as quick right away. So it happens good and bad. Some, like, little bug. tiny bee, like, tiny bee. bothering me. So I could even ask him, Django, can you put your head down? Right, so we do a lot of name and explain. And then notice too, I can put down a handful of kibble. Now if I worked him one by one for all of this food, this is, how many cups did you put in Luke? How many scoops? Two. Two scoops, so. But each one's like four uh, cups. Two cups. Oh, you, two cups, right? You the large two. scoop. Oh, yeah it is. So he, he put a bunch in here, so there's at least six cups of food in here. Um, Cause there was a little bit in here beforehand too. So he'll work for it and whenever he's done, He'll be done. Now notice too, if I want him to do something, I'm gonna put that something into the environment. Your head. And I Portia could... Jones says, I appreciate this. Thank you. Definitely. So Portia is doing our online course with her golden. He's super cute. Um, now you could do one by one. How do you know which to use? If you want to get your dog uh, jacked up, you're going to use, I don't know how much food you're going to get this time. Maybe you'll get one kibble, maybe you'll get 10 kibbles, maybe you'll get all of the kibbles, right? That's going to get a dog who's active. If I want to train a service dog like Mufasa, if I want to train a service dog, it might be one click, one food. Now here's something fun. So Gypsy only eats two cups of food a day, ish. So when she's eating two cups of food a day, whenever we have her, you know, we're working with her, she wants to let that training go as long as possible because my dogs love training. It's very addictive for my dogs. They super enjoy it and it's super fun. So for a gypsy, a lot of times I will do click for one treat because she wants it to go as long as possible, okay? So this, how do I reward calm behavior? You click for calm behavior. So I can reward this. I can wait a little bit longer. Did you see him twitch there? He was like, okay, are you gonna click? 
I could even wait for easy eyes. And whenever he blinks, I can click for that. So I watched his eyelids. When his eyelids got closed, he got a click. Why a clicker versus a verbal? Clicker is quick, it's sharp, and while I'm talking to you, I can still train my dog. My dogs all have a verbal release word. For us, it's break. B-R-E-A-K, break, brick, brick, Right, we can get it really short, but there's always emotion there. If I'm not feeling good, break. If I'm excited, break. If I'm sad, break. Right, there's always that emotion. You know what never has emotion? My clicker and my e-collar. So with the clicker, it's really great because you do, that's my rooster, um, because there is no emotion because it takes it out of it. And while I'm talking to you, I can click him and he knows exactly who I'm talking to. Now, if I said, good, well, how long does that take? If I say, yes, how long does that take, right? And if I'm talking to you and you ask me, you know, isn't it a beautiful day out? And I say, yes, am I talking to you or am I talking to him? Nobody knows. Now, say I wanted him to do something else. While he's eating, maybe Richard Luke or I could move the, the cot out of the way and put uh, maybe one of those boxes that we made. Put a box there and see what he does with the box. Now, because I didn't tell him to go to place all that time, that's okay. This, am I going to reward this if I'm kind of rewarding calm behaviors today? Put your head down. You betcha I can reward that. In the beginning, notice I'm not naming it. I'm barely talking to him, okay? And he does know head down. That's what we started working on um, over this weekend. So I'm, I'm barely talking to him. This is him figuring it out. Is this gonna mentally tire him out? You betcha. So when you're stuck in the house with your dog and your dog is driving you insane because you're both on lockdown quarantine, start this. If you don't have a clicker, you know what? Do you have a pen that goes like this? A clicky pen start with a clicky pen your dog's afraid of the clicker muffle it put it put it behind your back put it in your pocket now look I'm only giving them two kibbles this time now what happens whenever I like a behavior and it's time for me to name this behavior. What do I do then? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name the behavior just before I click. Down. And I'm gonna reward him after. One of the mistakes I see people make with the clicker all the time is one of these. Click food. Don't click food. You don't need to do that. Please don't do that. You need to click and then follow up afterwards, right? But if you get a little bit slow in your follow-up, especially since a lot of the dogs we work with are service dogs for people who have disabilities, you can go slow with it, and it works. It works beautifully. So watch. Down. So he needs to come to me. He, he didn't come to me as quickly. And I'm going to tell you the secret on why he didn't come to me as quickly. Kara Carlson says, pandemonium chewed up her uh, clicker. I like the pen idea. Tired of saying click, click. Right? Yep. You remember Panda, the German Shepherd one? Uh, maybe. You know Panda. Um, so we have, some of our goats are going on a walkabout on the property. So one of them has been over here watching the whole time and another one just came by and he got distracted. Not that it's an excuse. Because he needs to learn to work even while goats are running around the background. Up, uh, Amber Hadlock says, So does one click or two matter, even when you plan to use e-collar in future? That is an awesome question, Amber, and it doesn't matter. It's whatever you want to do. So why one click versus two clicks? It's totally up to you. These type of clickers, it's easy to go two clicks. Martin, Bart, Mark. Michael and Bart Bellin do it, um, my mentors. So it's fun to do. I started as a clicker trainer and sometimes I will click once, sometimes I will click twice. 
it depends honestly on how quick my thumb is like that's the difference um, it does not mean any different I do not train that one click means come to me and two click means stay in behavior or one click means good and two click means awesome because I don't want my dog listening did she make that second click sound so it's just if I click this is what they do now my dogs also know that just because somebody clicked doesn't mean it was me so that's a very important thing as well um, because it's one thing that as a professional trainer I've heard a lot I'm not going to use clicker in my classes or I don't want to use clicker in my classes because what happens whenever you have 10 or 15 people in a room and they're all clicking their dogs how does a dog know who it is because your dog knows they're, they're not stupid okay so you can click I could be in a room with with a hundred people all clicking their dogs it might get a little bit annoying Oh, no, I can't figure anything, uh, I, I don't see anything wrong with a whole room full of people going. <laughs> so you could do vocal like that. And why I don't use a type of sound is because whenever I make the kissy noise, especially training service dogs, here's a big tip for you. I want the kissy noise means look at me because people are weird. Okay? <laughs> and people see your dog out there as a service dog working and what do they do? So he looks at me while I'm doing that, he is gonna get rewarded. Now what happens in the future when he looks at somebody else for doing that, he gets a correction. Should I do it? Um, hold on, let me see what he set up. Yeah. Let him finish. Now, so you're gonna see, now this isn't about corrections, we'll do that in another video. Go ahead, Liz. So you can see his leash is kind of getting tangled up in his feet. So this is something you can work on um, training, especially for the service dogs because they are with you all the time. And a lot of times they do get their feet tangled up in their leash. It depends on what you want to call it. I like fix or fix it. And I haven't really started him with that. So it's between his legs. I might, I tightened up a wee little bit. Fix. So just for lifting up his foot, he got a click and he'll get two treats. Two kibbles. I call it treats, guys. It's kibbles. Or I'll call them rewards and it's still kibbles. He doesn't know what this is for, but it was just for the feet fixing. So I named it a little preemptively there and that was bad of me. So what if my goal is to work on fix it with oh, his feet? Kim Cunningham says, my puppy came running to your clicker. <laughs> Kim, uh, the people who do training with me, whenever I do my podcasts or when they're watching videos of me through our online course, their dog's usually right there listening. So I love that. See, I can train your dog <laughs> through the power of Facebook. The power of Skyping. Right? Oh, we do video chat all the time. So that's one of the things, guys, too, is if you do have any questions, we can schedule a private video call with us. And it's from the comfort of your own home. So we had a drop off today. Mila got dropped off for boot camp for her service dog boot camp. So what we did, and if you look back on Facebook, it was a dirt the bike. Picture. Like I was in like a full blown like dirt bike like racing outfit with like a sponsor on the back. Maybe we missed something, and that's what's going on now. Um. So what we did is we set up a crate out on the other patio. Oh, Sam Goodwin uh, said something. Start working on laying still while watching this, and Maui has already settled, de settled down with his head down. Your advice is amazing. Thank you, Sam. Uh, but yeah, so we had a dog come in, Mila, so we set up a crate. The owner came, he put her in the crate, he left her stuff on the table, and he left. And after he was gone, Rich went out and took her and gave her a bath to wash anything off, and then went through all her stuff. He said, it's a new leash. I said, I don't care if it's a new leash. She says, it still has the price tag. I said, I don't care. A new leash means it was just at the store with who knows how many people. You know, you, you don't know. So if you want to be as protected as possible, you know, disinfect, wipe off, and have, have protocols. So I didn't even talk to him. I stood in the doorway. I put the screen down a little bit. 
and I told them, make sure you do the online course and we'll be in touch via text and, and, uh, and video and phone. Uh-uh. No, I didn't tell him to do anything, so he is more than welcome to walk off. It's not like I told him down, but I don't want him to, so. Maybe that was bad Vicky for waiting too long to click because I was telling you a story. Mm, maybe. maybe. that's okay. <clears throat> so I can reward. This is one of my tricks for getting really good focus, which I'm good at getting really good focus is I will wait the dog out when the dog looks at me. Now we've had dogs who will do one of these and go around the person and then keep looking. <clears throat> we've had a couple of them. The last one was last uh, year, it was a Doberman. Portia Jones says, I am confused between place, stay, and relax. I have been using stay as an, as an reinforcer to not move without the release word, which is free. I also began using the word relax for a few days with him when he is totally relaxed. No, that's not for you. Any advice of getting more engagement and focus? And Amber Scott says, Help, lol. I'm from Ohio. I'm on disability. Got a new puppy. How would you start training with him? He was a rescue. I have no idea what breed it is. Okay. So those are two great questions. Luke, you have to make sure I stay on track and answer them. So uh, the difference between stay down and settle. Uh, place, place and stay, and relax. So place is on this object. Get to it. Stay on it until I release you. That's place. And it could be any object. It could be this, it could be a towel, it could be a doormat, it could be a yoga mat. It's any place, right? Any raised surface that's different. That's place. This is downstay. So downstay, you don't need to have a place with you. For example, when I go to the movies, when I go to Disney, I don't bring a separate place. My dog has to have a very good downstay. But if I'm at home watching TV, I can use a downstay or I can use a place. And place is a little more free in the fact that I don't care if he's standing, sitting, or downing on place, he just cannot cross the boundaries. If you ever played the hot lava game when you were a kid and you jumped from like the couch to the love seat to the chair because you couldn't touch the ground, that's kind of what place is like. And then settle for me is I want you, this is settle. I want the head down, so settle. And I could capture it that way, or easy, settle or easy. It's just lay down and put your head down. Why? Because sometimes with the service dogs, you want them to put their head dog. You don't want them up and alert the whole time because this isn't time for that. All it's right. time to relax right now. And Amber Scott uh, wants to know how you would start training uh, a puppy who's a rescue with no idea of what breed he is. So, yeah, depending on breed doesn't really matter. Just if it's a small dog, you're going to have less repetitions than a big dog. You know, if he was a chihuahua, there's no way he could eat this much food, okay? So what I would do to start training any dog for anything, I don't care what you're training him for, well, pet, service, therapy stuff, like if you're training a guard dog, this probably isn't what you wanna do. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your bowl of food, you're gonna get your clicker, you're going to click and put that food down. Click and put the food down, click and put the food down. And if you're feeding him, if it's a puppy and you're feeding him three times a day, that's three times that you can click and put that food down. Now say you're in a rush, click and put the food down. Say you're not in a rush and you have some time. You're gonna sit just like I am here. You can be inside if you want to. You're gonna have a clicker in your hand and you're gonna have the food bowl. And when your dog does something that you like, even something that you aren't planning on him doing, even something he might never ever repeat again, you can click and reward that behavior. So again, if I'm dealing with a small dog, it's probably gonna be smaller food and it's gonna maybe be one kibble or like five or six kibbles, depending. Cause I wanna make sure I keep it engaged. I'm also gonna set the timer for five minutes, seven minutes maximum. Amber Scott clarified, he is a large breed. Large breed, perfect. Then you have more training opportunities. Um, and then for this, now he's not looking at me, but he was down and he was good. So like I could give him a handful. I could feed him like this if I want to. And he could eat out of my hand. And I have to wipe it off because now I have doggy slobber and the powder. Yeah, it's crap. good for you. Yeah. It's good for the it's skin. Gross. Now, if I want focus, what am I not going to do? For the love of God, do not do one of these. Watch. Please don't do that. That is one of my pet peeves and it drives me absolutely crazy. Don't do it. What you want to do instead is wait him out. Now, what's he looking at? He's looking at the food bowl. Now he's looking away from me. Now he's kind of looking at me, side eye. Now he's still looking at the food bowl. He's doing one of those, who is it, Luke? The gopher? The not-impressed gopher? Uh, dramatic gopher from, like, 
20 years ago or something? Oh, I don't think it was 20 years ago. Ah, I want to say it's I'm 20 South years Park. ago. So what did he do? He looked away. 15 years ago. Then he looked right at me. So I can click then. So you can start capturing however small a behavior that you like. Amber Scott says, awesome. Thank you so, 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 so much. I don't know about a billion so there's only three, so Well you have oh what a creative license. Yeah. <laughs> so I like this. Being harassed by a fly. I like this a lot. Now if he would underneath my chair, that would be even better. So say he does something freaking amazing and I wanted to wrap up training, I could click and give him the whole rest of the food bowl. You can do that. Say he's starting to dwindle down. When do you stop training? Uh, Before they're done. You don't want to wait until he's like, oh, for the love of God, I'm not looking at you again. Kim Cunningham says, I hate seeing people hold food to their nose. We had focus, uh, we had focus by end of first day home. So easy. Portia Jones says, Luke is awesome. You both are amazing. Perfect. Thank you, Portia. If that's really what she said and looked at it, make that one out. Uh, L-U-C, so I know I didn't make it up because I never spell my name that way. That's how I always spell your name. Well, that, that now you know. <laughs> that's what it is on the website, too. So for this, right, I like it still. Click, he comes to me. What do I not do? I do not shove it right into his face. He has to come to me to get it. Portia Jones says I am sorry, even though there's really no reason to apologize. No, you're good, Portia. No, so his name, so Luke, Rich thought it was going to be L-U-K-E, which he doesn't tell me until we get home from the hospital after he was born, and I had already filled out his birth certificate as L-U-C-A-S. Now, I wanted to call, just call him Luca, L-U-C-A, and he, that was a huge argument, so that's what I call him as Luca, or Luke, and so I spell it L-U-C. It was L-U-K-E whenever he was in elementary school, but this way, you just chop off the A and S. So he's looking, he's up here, he's getting food. So I don't have to, if I'm a person in a wheelchair, I can totes do this, right? If you don't have great hand-eye coordination, you can still do it. I can put this in a treat pouch at my pocket if I'm going out in public with him and if I catch him looking at me, because I like focus, focus is huge, I can reward that. And the more I pay attention to him and work him instead of talking to you guys or watching my goats in the background. Kim Cunningham, how old is he now? Well, I don't know how old here. Django is. Oh, Django's a year old? Yeah. All right. That's old totally you? who you mean. I will not answer any further questions. No, how old are you? 18. He's 18. I have an 18 year old. I feel old. I feel like I'm 18. Notice I don't have onto his leash so I can always step on it. Just so he can't wander too much. Remember your aquarium, right? How big of an area do you want? So this, this is super wicked cute and I like it. Oh my God, that's even cuter. Wow, to both. <laughs> but there are ellipses after the wow. What do you want me to do? So if I want him to be a little more active, right? So while he's eating, you guys notice I, I do annoy him a little bit while, I, while he's eating. He's fine with it. He's good with it. It works. I kind of annoy Luke while he's eating too sometimes. But one of the things you could do, we'll wait for him to do something else. So for this, like I could end it right here. But he's also a melon one, he can go longer. And then what I could do is toss the food. Right. Luke, do you train too? Do you? Yeah, uh, he yeah. All the time. He is... Sort of he's, compulsory. <laughs> yeah, but he, he's been made to. Um, from, God, from whenever I first started training, Luke has been training as long as I have. So you know what we used to do? Rich was working, he was doing engineering at the time. And if somebody wanted to do a session, and, you know, I'd tell them, well, we can schedule it during the day, but then I had to Good bring man. it with me. Or... He, he'd have to do it during the day and I'd bring Luke or in the evenings or weekends, in which case Luke would usually be watching, you know, Rich would watch him because Luke was two, three, four years old, right? He wasn't even in school yet. So Luke would come with me and I would have Hot Wheels in my purse or I would have a notepad and, and pencils and drawing stuff in my purse or a coloring book. 
And so he'd sit, I remember him sitting at one person's on their stairs drawing. I remember another one, he would sit um, at their table and draw. Another one, he'd, he'd do Hot Wheels cars. So I could train, <clears throat> and then he would keep occupied. So Luke has been training for as long as I have. This is ridiculous. Go on. He's lying half on it, not the good way. No. I guess the good way. Django fat. Oh, it's a table. <laughs> So yeah, so Luke's been training a long time. He's great with the dogs. Personally, um, it looks like he's just about done. Yeah, he's totally done. So one of the things, this is one of the dogs that broke. One of their chew bones, not, you know, one of a dog, part of a dog. A dog broke. So I could put it in here because I don't want him to have that. That's not fair. Is he going to silver and gold, Django? Um, Luke, I think. Uh, <laughs> also, Django, is he going to silver and gold? Um... I just had Gypsy at silver, gold, Django's coming next gold, I believe. Right. Unless something weird happens, that's our goal, is to bring Django to gold. And if directed towards me, no. <laughs> no, he's not going <laughs> Not for even Rich bronze. Rich just did silver. Is there a bronze? No, but they're coming out with a tin. <laughs> I love it. I think it's the funniest thing. They're going to do an um, bar. Yeah, she just clarified me, so yeah, no. Yeah. yeah, not now. Um, this no. This is the year of uh, Rich doing it. Um, I did last year, Karen's doing last year and this year, and then um, Rich is doing it this year. So maybe Luke for next year? I don't know. No. Nah. Um, I think, you know, if he, he has to decide what he wants to do with his life. I if already he wants to do dog pretty training. much figured out just, you know, coronavirus making everybody crazy. They are. They're all crazy. Um, but Luke, Luke's a typical 18-year-old with you know, pie-in-the-sky ideals. He wants to be a farmer. He wants to grow <laughs> stuff. Or he wants to be an artist. No, but I've been kind of consistent. Have you? Yes. Okay. Now, say I really... Say my dog's on a wet food diet, and I don't want to plop wet food, or my dog's on a raw diet, what do you do in that case? You're going to have his food up here, and there's going to be a secondary bowl down there. And whenever he's doing good, you can plop some. You can put gloves on, or you can uh, use your fingers, or you can use a spoon. So all my dog, well, I can't even say that anymore. Most of my dogs have been at raw, on raw at one time or another. Uh, whenever Gypsy was on raw, I remember I would have a, a, a big tablespoon, right? Like what comes with a normal eating set. And so I just plump a thing of raw food down for her. The other thing you could do is this. Django, sit. You sat. I want to look at me as well. And then I could just offer it. Just offer him the rest of the food. <laughs> so look what I did. He's looking in the bowl. He's like, wait, wait, where's the bone? So if he doesn't want to eat it, he's done. That was it. That was his final chance. He's a good boy. Come here. He's a good boy. No, you're not getting that bone. It's not your bone. It's Andre's. Right? So there's things you can do if you do, do canned or you do do raw or you do moist food. Or what if I wanted to wet this food for him? Or what if I wanted to add supplements to this food? I can add supplements to it, and then I can just offer him the whole bowl of food. Like this. Oh, what happens if you click and your dog doesn't come? You can click again and offer. Maybe your clicker isn't charged as much as you want to, or maybe... They're just done? Maybe they're done. Um, you know, you never know. All right. Uh, Kim Kayam also said, what do you want to do with Luke? So... What do you want to do? Well, I mean... We'll uh, grow stuff, like uh, essentially start up a flower garden and maybe do some like actual straight-up farming using our soon-to-be-unused uh, acres of land. I mean, we have cows, but uh, getting kind of old. <laughs> and maybe at some point uh, go to college and join the Marines or the Army or something. Or Space Force. But... Space Force would be awesome. Yeah, that's six branch now. Everybody has to get used to that. Right. Oh my god, if he would have made Commander Picard general of it, that would have just been the most amazing thing. Even though he's an actor, and that would have made any sense, and so it it's matter. built off of the Air Force. It doesn't matter. So I it's already know. got commanders and secretary. It's okay. It still would have been awesome. I can dream in my geek world, can I? If he would have been the mascot, I would have been fine with it. <laughs> so yeah, but what we wanted for Luke, too, is we want him to have a career that he can fall back on. And uh, Luke... What, what type of dogs do you prefer to work with? Nice ones. So service dogs? Ones who listen. Uh, 
Once for our, like, kind... Oh, nice goals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ones who are kind, uh... Ones who, uh... Don't try to bite you and eat you and pee all over the place? Yeah, I think that uh, about sums it up. <laughs> yeah, Luke prefers the service dog ones as well. Um, just because you don't have to deal with that. A service dog ought not be aggressive. I mean, you might have to deal with potty training, but we don't usually take the service dog uh, ones in until they are six months old so usually potty training is done by then and honestly if it's a little bit older like Mila who came in today she's over a year old and she's just now coming in for her service dog boot camp so hopefully we can work her a little bit more than what we can work you know a six month old dog who hasn't had any training before they got dropped off so the farther they are along whenever they come in I'm getting really harassed by flies now let's see um, the further along they are when they come in, the further we can take them. If we're teaching their name and sit and down and, and working on that stuff, then that's what we have to work on. If they come in and they know that, we could do more task work. We can do some public outings usually, not during lockdown as much. But, you know, like we can see what we can head out and do. And then we can always set up, uh, you know, set up stuff here for them. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Last call, guys. All right, let's give it like a minute or like a like 20 seconds. We have 20 seconds to write out sentence and then post it and then no more. And then no more, no food for you, no answers for you. So I'm going to be live on the IACP um, page tonight on the International Association of Canine Professionals. They're doing an event tonight on Facebook Live. So I'm going to be one of the speakers who can get called up at any time. All right, you've lost it. No more posting your stuff. That was 20 seconds. And seconds. the only thing we got was Teresa. Il uh, we got two things. So you know, that's Teresa from Caleb and Teresa. Teresa. Teresa uh, okay. Teresa Jennings. Hi, Victoria and Luke. And Sam Goodwin said, when is a good time to end a settle session? And Kim uh, Cunningham said, topic. Topic tonight, I think it's going to be coronavirus in the dog industry for tonight. Um, I plan on, I was telling Luke and Rich, we need to do videos every day, at least this this week, on um, how people can train their dogs from home. I mean, my advice for it is keep calm, carry on, but that's been what, that's what's been since February. Right. Um, but when do you end a training session? I usually tell people five minutes, five, seven minutes, absolute top, and you should be able to work your dog through their food in five to seven minutes. Now, I know this one, we have this much food left. You know, my husband sees that, he's going to be like, oh, you must feed all that to him. No, you can't. If he wants to do this instead, well, then we're done training. Mm -hmm. And it was bad on me for letting him walk over there. I didn't see it was over there. So there are booby traps. I'm pretty sure he was just walking over because, hey, is that a goat? Right? But uh, there are booby traps. And what's your dog going to do? Usually, whenever I'm training and I'm not doing a Facebook Live as well, my training goes a lot faster. Right, so it's like bang, 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 bang. So this is just dragged down by the conversation with Kim about like my uh, hopes and dreams. Right? No, so I'm just I'm I'm saying it. So five minutes of bang, 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 or even the capture stuff, which you know it can take a little bit of time. That works out beautifully, right? It works, and you can do that um, five to seven minutes tops. And then if you have a dog, so Era was our last Malinois. Era could go for an hour easy. You know, and that's not even working at Disney for an hour. That's like bang, 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 bang. He loved working. So as your dog gets it, your dog's going to be able to work for longer and longer until your dog's done. Now, say you do two training sessions a day. Say you do a morning and an evening session. It might only be four minutes of training session. But honest to God, when I tell you this, listen to me, you would not believe, right? Five minutes. Set the timer on your phone. Set the timer on your watch. Five minutes. If you're not done then, too bad. Your dog does something good, click and give him the rest of the food, and you're done. Or put it up until the next time. If you have an, a, a dog who's full grown, I put it up until the next time. So I'm not giving the rest of this to him. He doesn't want it. I'm not force feeding him. And that's a, still a decent amount of food. I can tease him a little bit with it. But, he's but he doesn't care. It. Do you care, buddy? He says he cares. Right. So final thoughts, final statements, final... Final thoughts, statements. Get yourself a clicker on Amazon. They're awesome. Or several. Yeah, get several. In the if case these, of uh, the one who chewed up their clicker. Right. Uh, if you get these type, no, half of them probably won't work. One third to one half won't work, and that's fine. So order a half a dozen. Order a dozen clickers. Put them in different rooms in your house so they're there. Uh, we do, we'll put the food in the bowl like this and then put it on top of the crate. Now, some of the dogs, 
Like Candy will punch at the top of her crate to get her food to get knocked over. So we'll also use Tupperware. Uh, because we have multiple dogs, we will take a marker, a Sharpie marker on masking tape, and we will write the name of the dog on there so we know whose food is whose. We will fill it up in the morning, and then that's what they get to eat throughout the day as we train them. Now I do ask clients to bring in food pouch or treat bags, bags of treats, because we're gonna add those in too. Because I like to train with food. And I'm not gonna only rely on food, but whenever you're trying to capture a nice new behavior and you want the dog to, to be creative, right, and motivated, food is really nice. Okay? It's not to be all and end all, but food and how to train your clicker, guys. That's what this is about. Anything else, Luke? I'm good. Okay. So I will see you guys tonight on the International Association of Canine Professionals Facebook page. Tonight is, what is tonight, you ask? Sunday, March 22nd, 2020. So if you're watching this live tonight, International Association of Canine Professionals, if you are not, sorry you missed a good one because I know it's going to be good. And then check back with us tomorrow and we'll see what we can do. All right. Uh, final thing from the viewership. Okay. Kim Cunningham says, good night. Good night, Kim. Are we off? Uh, now we are. Okay. Uh,